Hey guys, Jason here, and ASIC Miner has done it again. Now, as we all know, the ASIC Miner third gen chips won't come out until about April or May, so ASIC Miner is kind of in that position where they have to figure out a product line to come out with between now and then. Now, we all know you know ASIC Miner from making the USB chips to making the um, the boards basically. They also sell the chips individually to other companies that manufacture you know Bitcoin miners. But one thing that came out here recently is an ASIC Miner Cube. Now, it kind of reminds me of the ones that Butterfly Labs came out with. In, in, kind of. It looks, you know, it's in the same form, shape, and it has kind of the, the fan design and everything. But the chips inside are comp obviously different. You know, they're ASIC chips, but they're from a different manufacturer. So I just want to kind of give some brief information on this because a lot of people have asked me whether they should buy one of these or not. Again, just like financial advice, I don't tell you what kind of miners to buy, but if I provide the information, then you can make an educated guess or decision on your own. So anyway, normally this will run about 30 giga hashes and it will use 200 watts. If you overclock it, you'll get about 38.4 giga hashes with uh, 280 watts. But I've been reading through a lot of comments and a lot of people that have this device, they're saying they get about 32, 34 giga hashes on just a normal 200 watt usage. So, you know, it's actually shooting above what they predicted on the market specific specification sheet. And so it shows, you know, it's a good hardware. It uses a, a 12 um, centimeter fan, so not a very large fan, but really, you know, these chips aren't getting very hot. Although I wouldn't, you know, keep it in an area where it's, you know, going to be like 90 degrees. You know, you want to keep it, you know, 50 degrees temperature outside the box. Now, it actually, the, this is really interesting, inside the coating of like the computer on board to run the chips, if the, something happens to the fan, the, the system will completely shut itself off. And this is great because we all know with Bitcoin stuff, you know, these things, if something happens like your GPU and you don't have a fan going, these things get extremely hot. And the last thing you want to do is catch your house on fire because you were trying to Bitcoin mine. So that's a nice little feature, you know, kind of minute in importance, but it's still an interesting characteristic that adds to the board. So it also has two, it, well, it requires, I guess not has, two PCIe um, pin connectors. And so this is where I thought it was kind of interesting. It's, it differs, and you know, it differs from normal systems. You know, if you go out and buy a product out, in, you know, from the wild, like you go to Walmart, usually it'll use standard power. For some reason, the people that make these Bitcoin miners, um, it's been almost all the companies, they make you use the PSU for your computer. Now, I, I assume it could, probably could be that some of these devices use a lot of power, but I have a personal heater up in my room, a little space heater, that uses like 1,100 watts an hour. It's crazy. It uses so, and it's just a little tiny box. It's probably, I mean, it's, it's bigger than the the cube, the ASIC miner cube. So why they can't just devise a system where you can, you know, obviously you probably need a, a power brick, but how nice would it be just to be able to plug it into a conventional wall socket? Because now, you know, if you're mining, now you have to go out and buy, you know, and granted they're only like 50 bucks for like a 550 watt PSU, but still that's something that's an extended, you know, feature you have to buy into where they could easily have done a power brick and or some internal you know power transformation system so that you can just plug this device right into the wall. So I'm kind of disappointed on that, but yeah, it's still a pretty nice unit. Now, it does use a 10100 Ethernet port, which really when you're ASIC mining, or any mining really, Bitcoin mining, you're not using a, you know, you're not downloading gigabyte files, you're just sending, you know, very simple commands back and forth along with script to the pole if you're pole mining or to the network if you're solo mining. So you're not really using that much, so that's not a concern that it's only a 10100. Really, that probably saved them a little bit of money and made it cheaper to produce. So that's, you know, that's still kind of interesting. It, it would have been nice if there was a Wi-Fi card inside of it, but seeing that it needs a PSU and it's going to have to sit probably next to a computer, having a Wi-Fi card is not really going to add any advantage because it's going to have to have this huge big PSU sitting right next to it. So you're most likely going to have that near a computer. But just in a, you know, an added feature that would have been kind of nice to see. Now, it, this is where it gets kind of interesting. It uses six mini blades. So, you know, everyone knows that they, they sold, I think it was like 30 Bitcoins, the um, big blade. And they were selling the USB chips and they were selling the blades. Well, basically, they use six of these mini blades. Now, each blade has 16 ASIC miner chips on them, or ASIC chips, for simple, chips on them. And actually, you can actually control in the, con the web um, admin page when you kind of like um, go to that device, you know, you type in like 192.168.1.1 or whatever it would be for that address of the cube. You can actually change and alter each individual chip. So you, know, you could overclock, you know, 
three or four chips if you wanted. Now, in real, you know, realistic terms, if you're going to be overclocking, you're probably going to overclock all your units, and that means all your chips. But I think it's kind of interesting that if you wanted to, you know, you could just test out with one chip. That way, if you mess up and you you overpower it and you fry that chip, you're not going to destroy everything. Although I, I recommend people be careful with overclocking. Just like a computer, it's dangerous and it's one of those things where you want to be careful because you don't want to ruin a very expensive unit. Now people have been asking me also about pricing of these things because they're not really listed very publicly. Some sites that um, are more e-commerce sites on the internet will charge you up to about two bitcoins, which is about two grand right now. Where if you get into some group buys with trusted members in the bitcoin form, you can get them for about one bitcoin. So there's a huge spread of about you know double the price just for buying it on an e-commerce you know website. I would like to see BTC Guild come out and sell these cubes, but again they have limited quality, uh, limited quantity of these cubes. So you know don't expect too many of these to hit the market. It's more of just a product to hold the users and the dividend and investors over until the end when you know April May comes and they can release their third gen boards and third gen miners and probably retake the market. So that's just a quick you know, review of the ASIC miner cube. Obviously I like to have one in hand. I've tried to look into it, but a Bitcoin's really expensive. You know, spend a whole Bitcoin. And again, I've always talked about how mining, you never really know the hash rate in the next week, if even a month. So to project you know, future profits is always kind of risky. The one nice thing also with these cubes though, is you can stack them together. I saw on one of the e-commerce websites, they actually stacked like 12 of them together. And that's kind of cool that they're stackable, you know. You also, though, with that, you'd have to really watch out for heat. I would really want some intense systems keeping the cooling on those units because you don't want anything bad happening to your very expensive miner. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.